Hi everybody. In this session, we'll be seeing MCQs in the region of neuroanatomy. Which of the following is a modification of pia mater? What do you think is the right answer? Option B. So we know that the spinal cord terminates at the level of lower border of L1. The dura mater and the arachnoid, it terminates at the level of S2. What happens to the pia mater? The pia mater, it continues below the termination of spinal cord as phylum terminal and attaches to dorsal surface of first coccygeal vertebra, right? The same pia mater, if you see, so, and the spinal cord, keep the gray hole here. So this is the pia mater, okay? Imagine this is the pia mater covering the spinal cord, anterior posterior. So on the anterior aspect, the pia mater, it provides a septum to the anteromedian fissure. The part of the pia mater from which the septum arises, it is, it is thickened. That is called linear splendens. Similarly, on the posterior aspect, the pia, it gives a septum that attaches to the arachnoid matter passing through the subarachnoid space. This pial septum is called subarachnoid septum. This is the dura mater. Then from the sides of the spinal cord, you can see that from the pia mater, Two transparent ribbon like bands will extend, and from the lateral margin of that tooth like projection will extend, it will pass through the dura, I mean, arachnoid matter and attach to the inner surface of the dura. Okay, these are called ligamenta denticulata. So, modification of the pia mater down is phylum terminate in front, linear splendens behind subarachnoid septum. On either side, ligamentum denticulata. So the purpose of all these modification is to anchor the spinal cord, okay, in the subarachnoid space, which contains the CSF, right? Structure or the vessel involved in Wallenberg syndrome. Option C. So the posterolateral zone of medulla is supplied by Postro inferior cerebellar artery. Ischemia of that can lead to Wallenberg syndrome. So, here involvement of the cerebellar peduncle will lead to ipsilateral ataxia. Involvement of the vestibular nucleus will lead to giddiness. Involvement of nucleus ambiguous will lead to ipsilateral paralysis of muscles of soft palate, pharynx, and larynx, okay? And then involvement of the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve will lead to ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature from face, okay? And involvement of the lateral spinothalamic tract that will lead to contralateral loss of pain and temperature from limbs and trunk, right? So these are the features of Wallenberg syndrome. Facial colliculus includes, which is the right answer, option A. Abducens nucleus and internal genu of facial nerve. So if you take a section of the pons, yeah, the lower pons, you can make out the facial colliculus that. It is also seen in the floor of the fourth ventricle, right? This elevation that you see here, 
it's produced by the abducens nucleus which is going to be wound around by the internal genu of facial nerve okay what uh, what is this phenomena called neurobiotaxis neurobiotaxis during the embryo period what is happening here migration of motor nucleus of the facial nerve towards the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve so phase you know the muscles are going to be innervated by seventh nerve the skin over the face is going to receive innervation from the trigeminal nerve so the migration of the motor nucleus of the facial nerve towards the sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve to establish quicker response quicker reflexes okay that's the purpose of neurobiotaxis middle two third of crust cerebri where do you find crust cerebri in the mid brain right contains which fibers corticospinal fibers so the crust cerebri yeah the medial 1/6 of the crust cerebri what does it contain frontopontine fibers the lateral 1/6 of the crust cerebri has the temporopontine parietopontine occipitopontine that is the middle 2/3 of crust cerebri that has the corticospinal fibers and the corticonuclear fibers right the cranial nerves which carries parasympathetic fibers includes 3 7 9 and 10 third cranial nerve edinger westphal nucleus seventh cranial nerve lacrimatory nucleus superior salivatory nucleus ninth one inferior salivatory nucleus 10th one dorsal nucleus of vagus right so this you should remember the tip of your fingers cranial nerves with parasympathetic function 3 7 9 10 okay this table available in vishram singh make sure you are thorough with it injury to the right hypoglossal nerve the tip of the tongue protrudes to the same side okay the genioglossus is said to be the safety muscle of tongue because it helps to protrude the tongue out normally when both the genioglossus contract it will keep the tongue in the tip of the tongue in the midline contraction of the right genioglossus will cause the tip of the tongue to protrude to the opposite side so when there is paralysis of the right genioglossi there will be protrusion of the tip of the tongue to the same side posterior spinal cerebellar tract passes through inferior cerebellar peduncle so there are three cerebellar peduncle do you know its name other names the inferior cerebellar peduncle is also called restiform body middle cerebellar peduncle is called brachium pontus superior cerebellar peduncle is called brachium conjunctivum okay remember there are no efferent fibers passing through the middle cerebellar peduncle so what are the afferent fibers passing through inferior cerebellar peduncle posterior spino cerebellar fibers olivo cerebellar par olivo cerebellar cuneo cerebellar anterior external arcuate fibers reticulo cerebellar vestibulo cerebellar you saw the mnemonic pop cap okay middle cerebellar peduncle only afferents and what are they the ponto cerebellar fibers superior cerebellar peduncle the mnemonic is chart c for 
we are talking about the efferent fiber uh, afferent fibers cellulo cerebellar hypothalamo cerebellar a is for anterior spino cerebellar tecto cerebellar trigemino cerebellar okay most of the efferents from the cerebellum they pass through superior cerebellar peduncle dentato thalamic dentato rubro thalamic cerebellum rubral fibers all those will pass through the superior cerebellar peduncle ventro postro medial nucleus of thalamus receives what is the answer trigeminal lemnus thalamus can be an essay question be thorough with that okay so medial geniculate body related to your auditory pathway lateral geniculate body the light or the visual pathway vpm receives the trigeminal lemniscus the solitario thalamic tract vpl receives the medial lemniscus and the spinal lemniscus ventrolateral nucleus receives the fibers from cerebellum dentato thalamic dentato rubro thalamic ventral anterior receives fibers from globus pallidum the subthalamic fasciculus anterior nucleus of thal thalamus receives the mammalothalamic tract okay content of sylvian sulcus what is the answer option okay sylvian sulcus is nothing but the the lateral sulcus okay which lodges the middle cerebral artery the middle cerebral vein what is the other name for central sulcus sulcus of rolando the wernicke speech area is located in which lobe that's the sensory speech area right area 45 and 44 the motor speech area 40 and 39 will be located in frontal lobe the inferior frontal gyrus the sensory speech area the wernicke's area they lie over the supra marginal gyrus and the angular gyrus 45 44 okay lesion of substantia nigra leads to easy parkinsons chorea due to lesion in caudate nucleus acidosis due to lesion in globus pallidus dalesness due to lesion in subthalamic nucleus okay so basal ganglia again an important essay question charcot's artery supplies which part of the internal capsule internal capsule very very important every part of it is very important so the internal capsule has a anterior it's a projection fiber anterior limb genu posterior limb retro lentiform and sub lentiform part the fronto pontine fibers pass through anterior limb genu and posterior limb the parieto pontine occipito pontine fibers pass through retro lentiform part the tempero pontine fibers they pass through sub lentiform part the genu has the cortico nuclear fibers for head and neck the posterior limb has the cortico spinal fibers for upper limb the trunk and lower limb blood supply of internal capsule is very important majority of it the anterior limb genu and the posterior limb okay is going to be mainly supplied by striate branches of middle cerebral artery okay apart from that as you see here the anterior limb of the genu is also supplied by anterior cerebral artery the genu the genu of the internal capsule is supplied by direct branches from internal carotid and posterior communicating artery and uh, a smaller part of the posterior limb and the entire retro lentiform part is going to be supplied by anterior choroidal artery 
okay two arteries you should know the recurrent artery of hubner that is the striate branch of anterior cerebral artery okay the lateral striate branch of middle cerebral artery which is vulnerable to increase in intracranial pressure can rupture that's called the charcot's artery of cerebral hemorrhage right and that supplies the posterior calcar vessels is found in which part of the lateral ventricle the answer is okay so what are the parts of the lateral ventricle it has a central part of the body the extension of it into the frontal lobe is called anterior horn extension of it into the posterior lobe will be called the occipital lobe will be called the posterior horn and the extension of it into the inferior horn will be called the temporal lobe will be called the inferior horn okay so the posterior horn the roof the lateral wall and the floor is contributed by the tepetum the fibers coming from the body of corpus callosum lateral to it will be optic radiation lateral to it we can see the inferior longitudinal fasciculus in the medial wall you get to see two bulges one above and one below the above one is produced by the fibers of forceps major the fibers coming from the splenium of corpus callosum that is called bulb of posterior horn and lower down the indentation produced by the calcarine sulcus that is called calcar avus anterior choroidal artery arises from what is the answer internal carotid artery so circlophil is important question hope you have read it so the blood supply to the brain is mainly from vertebral artery and internal carotid artery so where's the vertebral artery here can you see the vertebral artery here what are the five branches coming from vertebral artery anterior spinal artery posterior spinal artery meningeal branches medullary branches and posterior inferior cerebellar artery anterior spinal posterior spinal meningeal medullary posterior inferior cerebellar artery similarly from basilar artery five branches the antero inferior cerebellar artery the pontine branches labyrinthine artery superior cerebellar and posterior cerebral the terminal branch from the internal carotid the cerebral part of internal carotid gives rise to again five branches the ophthalmic artery the middle cerebral the anterior cerebral that you see here yes the anterior choroidal and posterior communicating artery okay so the circle of villus is contributed by the anterior cerebral connected by the anterior communicating artery here the internal carotid the posterior communicating artery and the posterior cerebral artery okay cisterna ambiens what is it it's a subarachnoid cistern what is the content of cisterna ambiens option d is the right answer great cerebral vein of gallen so normally in subarachnoid space there is some amount of csf in subarachnoid cisterns there will be a pool of csf collected okay so where is cisterna ambiens here below the splenium this space where you can see large amount of csf that's called the cisterna ambiens it contains the great cerebral vein of gallen then this is called the cisterna magna or the cerebello medullary cistern in front of pons there is cisterna pontis which has the basilar artery interpeduncular fossa the interpeduncular cistern the content will be circle of villus right okay guys hope the session was useful for you any doubt you can get back to me thank you